One of the more interesting things you can do with multicellular organisms is tissue-specific expression of transgenes. In this study, Dowd and co-workers rearranged two DNA sequences found in the maize genome to create a transgene that activates production of a pesticide in the corn silk. Earworm is a common infection in corn. One existing solution is the use of Bt transgenes. Here a gene from a bacillus bacterium is transferred into the corn and consumption of the corn by the worm kills them. There have been concerns over the food safety of Bt corn, so researchers have sought more natural modifications to plants that don't require the transfer of foreign genes or restricting the expression of transgenes to non-edible portions of the plant. Only the corn kernels are consumed, so restricting the expression of transgenes to other tissue types is one way of preventing any potential maleffects of expressing foreign proteins in food products. In this study, they employ a silk-specific promoter to restrict the expression of downstream genes to just the silk. The downstream gene is a transcription factor that drives production of a compound already in the corn genome able to kill worms. By identifying native genes that can be rewired to produce a desired phenotype, researchers can identify plausibly natural modifications to the organism that can later be achieved through more accepted breeding practices. This study is a clever example of this approach where the design is something that would occur through natural mutation and thus in principle could be identified through breeding and genetic screening. The anti-earworm compound in their study is called mason. This flavonoid is natively produced at low levels in corn. At higher concentrations, it is known to kill earworm larvae. Mason production is regulated by a transcription factor called P1, and it is known that overproduction of P1 in maize results in the accumulation of mason. They also need a tissue-specific promoter. The notion of tissues as a differentiated lineage of cells is a trait unique to multicellular organisms. Typically, differentiation involves a wide array of events, but primary within these is differences in gene expression and the emergence of tissue-specific transcription factors. The genetic circuits that control differentiation are often much like the toggle switch in the sense that they are highly multi-stable circuits with strong reinforcement of one dominant transcription factor. Finding tissue-specific promoters is fairly easy. In this case, for silk, the researchers were looking for female preferential promoters using differential display methods. They isolated mRNA from silk, tassel, leaves, and roots, converted that RNA to cDNA, then look to see which genes were preferentially expressed in specific places. Today, the tool of choice for such a study would be RNA-seq, but that did not exist at the time this was performed, so instead they use a CloneTech PCR Select cDNA subtraction kit. In essence, this kit has you annealing two cDNA populations to one another, and the method enriches for the differences between the two samples. From this screen, they identify the PSH64 gene as something highly localized to silks. By cloning out the promoter in front of PSH64, they obtain a promoter part that is specifically activated in silks. They now put it all together. First, they look at the kernels. Here you see six strains of corn kernels. Their darkness is an indication of the accumulation of flavonoids in the kernel. More specifically, the flavonoid polymerizes into a polymer called flobophene, and that accumulates and is red-colored. As controls, they have two natural alleles of the P1 gene called P1RR and P1RW. The RR strain has red pericarp, which is the outermost layer of the kernel, and a red cob. The RW strain has a red pericarp and white cob. B73 is the model corn strain whose genome has been sequenced. High 2 corn is a strain that is amenable to transformation by gold particle bombardment. Thus, they introduce their genes into High 2 and then pollinate it with B73 pollen, and, and what they are testing are the resulting hybrid strains. Strains 28A, 15A, and 7E are three isolates of transgenic strains. Each contains an engineered gene in which the P1 cDNA was inserted in between the silk-specific promoter and terminator from PSH64. I put boxes around these three transgenics. Thus, they get different degrees of discoloration from different strains. This is a common theme in eukaryotic engineering. The random nature of the genome incorporation methodology gives rise to variation in expression levels. 
Though they employ a tissue-specific promoter, it isn't entirely off in other tissues. It is not clearly stated in the paper, but let's assume that the strains they refer to as transgenic browning and transgenic non-browning are these 7E and 15A strains, respectively. They also examine the silk of these two transgenics and the parent strains. The transgenic browning strains contain the most mason, but slightly elevated levels are observed in the transgenic non-browning strains as well, relative to the high two parent strain. They also examine insect mortality after being fed the silks, and indeed both transgenic strains show elevated killing, particularly in young larvae.